Fortune magazine in an excellent article written by Catherine Ebon has broken the Fast and the Furious story, the real story. And it is amazing what we didn't know. It's also amazing what the Obama administration admitted to when it wasn't true. So what did they do? Well, first of all, uh, they looked into uh, 2,000 pages of confidential, confidential ATF documents. Now, ATF, of course, uh, is the group, and they interviewed 39 people. Uh, ATF is the group, of course, that uh, was alleged to have gotten 2,000 weapons and given it to the Mexican drug cartels. Walk the guns over is the way they put it. And it turns out, after uh, doing a six-month investigative uh, piece, including all the things that we just mentioned and all those interviews, Fortune has concluded that that is not what happened at all. Here, let me give you some conclusions. Uh, the ATF had no such tactic. It never purposefully allowed guns to be illegally trafficked. They seized weapons whenever they could, but were hamstrung by prosecutors and weak laws which stymied them at every turn. What do they mean by that? So, they never bought the guns, they never gave it to the Mexican drug cartels, they never gave it to anybody who were middlemen. It turns out they were doing the investigations that found out that there were middlemen in Arizona who were buying these guns. Sometimes people who were receiving food stamps who were buying $300,000 worth of weapons. The ATF agents there are the ones that said, please, let's investigate this, let's stop this. And federal prosecutors said, no, nah, I'm not sure you have enough information. No, we will not allow you to pursue this. One of the reasons that they did not allow them to pursue it, well, because the laws, the gun laws in Arizona are incredibly, pathetically weak. Why? Because the NRA said, how dare you, don't you regulate guns under any circumstance. Do you know that in Arizona, here's what you need to buy any amount of weaponry. You need to be 18 and pass a criminal background check. That's it. That's it. You can come in and buy 10 guns, 20 guns, 30 guns, 300 guns. It doesn't matter. And in fact, you have to prove intent that if you were, that you're buying these guns for illicit purposes, you've got to go inside the guy's head. If they say, the prosecutors say, hey, you know what? If he buys uh, 20 guns and then turns around and sells it 10 minutes later to a Mexican drug cartel, well, he could have, uh, his original intent might have been to use the guns, but in those 10 minutes he changed his mind and gave it to the cartels instead. We can't prosecute him. That's because of the laws in Arizona. There is uh, no waiting periods, no need for permits. Buyers are allowed to resell the guns. In fact, if ATF agents stop them in, with these guns, they say that the ATF can be sued for getting their, uh, their rightful property away from them. So the ATF agents in this case turned out and led by uh, agent Dave uh, Vorth were trying to get prosecutors to move on this for months at a time. For years they've been doing this investigation. So as you read into the details more, it gets crazier and crazier. Linda Wallace, special agent with the Internal Revenue Services Criminal Investigation Unit who was assigned to the Fast and the Furious team says, no, 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 wait a minute, you have this story entirely backwards. And she's a huge gun rights advocate. And she says, quote, Republican senators are whipping up the country into a psychotic frenzy with these reports that are patently false. It's the exact opposite of what's happening here, right? Now, uh, it's okay, because uh, they, they got it, man. We, there's been several pieces of evidence uh, that uh, Republicans have trotted out. And remember, they're now trying to hold the Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt for over this program because they think he's covering up documents, it's already passed committee and now the uh, John Boehner is saying the full house is going to vote on it. In fact, they've already flipped some Democrats into voting against Eric Holder. Now what, what are some of their pieces of evidence? Well they say uh, they have this uh, paper uh, that uh, shows in on January 8th of 2010 that Vought, the man that we mentioned, uh, let the guns walk. It says, quote, currently our strategy is to allow the transfer of firearms to continue to take place, albeit at a much slower pace, in order to further the investigation and allow for the identification of additional co-conspirators. Now that's their smoking gun, as it were. <laughs> they got him, right? There he says, he's, we're allowing the transfer of firearms. Now, here's the part they didn't tell you. It turns out prosecutors told them 
No, you cannot stop it. He was a guy trying to stop the transfer of those firearms. They weren't ATF firearms. They were sold by the dealers there. And there's 835 gun dealers near the border in Arizona who are doing this. Like they don't know that the Mexican drug cartels are buying these guns. The NRA, who makes those incredibly weak laws, doesn't know it's going to the Mexican drug cartels. Of course they know. But the gun manufacturers are in the NRA. They want those guns sold. And if it goes to the Mexican drug cartels, who cares? They made an extra dollar out of it. So they go to the prosecutors and they say, the ATF agents say, well, I, I want to be able to pro arrest these guys. And the prosecutors say, no, you can't. So then Voth writes that email saying, well, I guess we're going to have to let him continue buying these guns, but can we at least track them? He asked for a wiretap. Now, the part of the story they didn't show you was, uh, as an example, Patrick Cunningham, U.S. Attorney's uh, Office, uh, then the criminal chief in Arizona, would write, uh, letters like this quote purchasing multiple long guns in Arizona is lawful transferring them to another is lawful even the sale or barter of the guns to another is lawful unless the United States can prove by clear and convincing evidence that the firearm is intended to be used to commit a crime in other words do not arrest them you can track them as your email says but you're not allowed to arrest them even though you know it's going to the Mexican drug cartels because of the laws that we have in this country, you got to let them walk away with those guns. That is not the fault of those ATF agents who are trying to stop it. That is the fault of those laws that were pushed by the NRA and the Republicans who now turn around and blame the ATF and say, how come you didn't stop the guns? This whole thing is revolting, but it goes on. So, uh, ATF, a second piece of the smoking gun they had was ATF agent uh, named John Dotson. Well, he went on the CBS Evening News and he appeared to be a whistleblower. And he, he told uh, everybody, oh my God, you, we're letting the guns walk. Can you believe this? And it seemed like Dotson was a good guy. You were intentionally letting guns go to Mexico. Yes, ma'am. I mean, the agency was. I'm boots on the ground here in Phoenix and telling you we've been doing it every day since I've been here. Here I am. Tell me I didn't do the things that I did. Tell me you didn't order me to do the things that I did. Tell me it didn't happen. Now you have a name on it, and you have a face to put with it. Here I am, someone, now, tell me it didn't happen. First of all, I would tell them that I'm sorry. Second of all, I would tell them that I've, <clears throat> I've done everything that I can for them to get the truth. After this, I don't know what else I can do, but I hope they get it. Now, we find out that, in fact, Dodson didn't like Voth, his commanding officer, because he would make him work on weekends. So he wanted to throw him under a bus. He would sh Dodson would show up in flip-flops, and Voth would say, hey, you you're an agent. But much more important than this, his, the nickname for Dodson, the guy on tape on CBS, was Renegade. Not because he was cool, but because he wouldn't listen to any orders. He'd go into an uh, uh, operation without his proper gear. And everybody's like, you're endangering everybody else. What are you doing here? And he'd have to be sent home. And even his best friend said, well, honestly, he could sometimes be an asshole. Okay, that's also in the fortune piece. But that's nothing compared to what Dotson actually did. You know who's the only one that actually allowed guns to be walked across the border? Our guns, ATF guns, Dotson the guy who is the theoretical whistleblower, outside of the Fast and Furious program, not as a part of it, outside of it, decided that he was going to be a renegade, a maverick. And he got, without authorization, he got three guns of ours sold to uh, a guy who then eventually uh, sold them to the Mexican drug cartel. Now, he was told when Voth, his commanding officer, found out about this, he said, what are you doing? And then they had to go and get permission afterwards for what he did, but he said, for the love of God, at least properly track the guns and properly track the money and everything else. So he sends uh, uh, Dotson an email saying, track the money, okay? And here is what Dotson writes back in an email to give you a sense of who's right and who's wrong. Uh, after being told that he had to track the money within five days, quote, do the orders define a day? Is it a calendar day? A business day? A work day? An Earth day? Because a day on Venus takes 243 Earth days, 
which would mean that I have plenty of time. In other words, I'm not going to follow your orders. I'm not going to track these guns. And guess what happened? The idiot, the moron, lost track of those guns. The only person who lost track of any guns was a theoretical whistleblower in this case, who the Republicans have put up as like, oh, you see that Dodson from the ATF said about walking guns, and I can't believe that ATF did this and Holder did this, etc. It turns out he's the only one who did it. And then the Fast and the Furious program was lauded by everyone inside the ATF and the government outside of those prosecutors who didn't want to do, uh, go forward with these cases as a model program because they were actually trying to stop the weapons. They didn't actually give the weapons to these guys. It's a fabrication. Now, by the way, why did the prosecutors drag their uh, heels on all this? Well, they did it because it turns out since the laws in Arizona and, and otherwise are so weak and so hard to prove that it's a really hard case to win. And even if you win it, it's a very minimal punishment. So they're like, what are we going to do? Waste our time and maybe get a you know, smear on our record if we lose on this rinky dink case because there's almost there's so little punishment of it? Again, who's the fault? Well, it's the Republicans in Arizona and everybody that supports the NRA it said, that said we should have very little punishment and it should be incredibly hard to prove. It's the exact opposite of what you've been hearing in the news. This story drives me crazy. I, I, I don't blame the media for getting this story wrong. Because they didn't, it's not their fault. They, you had guys like Dodson who on camera was like, oh my God, I gotta tell you about this walking guns program. I can't believe they did it. It turns out he's the son of a bitch who let the guns walk in the first place. Right? Now, you could say, hey, you should investigate that more, and as Fortune did. Now, remember, their Fortune's investigation took six months. But the reason I don't blame the media that much is because of the Obama administration reaction. Now, if you didn't really do it, and it turned out that Dodson was the bad guy, not the good guy, and Voss and the ATF was actually trying to stop the guns and never actually purchased guns and gave it to the drug cartels, wouldn't you speak up? Wouldn't you say something? Well, it turns out Eric Holder did say something. He admitted fault in a case where there were no fault. Listen to what he said, quote, the use of the misguided tactic is inexcusable and it must never happen again. But my God, man, why are you admitting things that didn't happen? Why on God's green earth would you do that? Why? They thought, oh, no, no, it's OK. We, we don't want to tangle on this gun rights issues before the election. That's not my speculation. Here's Fortune magazine, quote, the Obama administration, which for its part has capitulated in an apparent effort to avoid a rhetorical battle over gun control in the run up to the presidential election. Brilliant idea. Brilliant. Brilliant. So the NRA says weak laws, you're not allowed to prosecute any of these guys that are using these guns. You listen to them. And then when they say, how dare you not prosecute those guys? How dare you let those guy, guns walk? Your brilliant genius idea in your third dimensional chess was, oh, you're right, I'm so sorry. Jesus, come on, man. Anybody who still thinks Obama's a political genius, that this is the, that was the brilliant move to do? Oh, no, 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 we don't, we, we don't want to fight with the NRA before the election. Oh, my God, okay, I admit whatever you want me to admit, even though it isn't true. Losers. Losers. This is beyond inexcusable. And now they're going to have the Attorney General held in contempt. They've got 31 Democrats that have flipped on this. Now, the, another level of irony to this is the NRA is turning around and saying, we're going to score this vote. What that means is, if you vote in favor of Holder and you don't hold him in contempt, well, then we're going to say that was a vote against gun rights. So blame, do you understand the triple, quadruple irony there? It's the NRA's fault in the first place that this happens. Then they turn around and say, if you don't falsely accuse Holder, we're going to say you're against gun rights. By the way, what's the ultimate result of this? This is the third layer of victory for the NRA and the right wing. Because from 2010 to 2011, since this investigation of the Fast and the Furious began, gun seizures in Group 7 and the ATF's three other groups in Phoenix dropped by more than 90%. So. More wins for the gun manufacturers. 
they make a, a scandal about how they're not seizing enough guns. They use it as, as an excuse to seize less guns.